you've always been a fascination to me more yeah, than yeah. just a friend. Mm. And let me let me tell you why. Because when I first came here was uh, mm. in the midst or the beginning of uh, the comedy store's uh, strike. I guess that's right. Yeah, yeah. So for those that don't know, um, the comedy store was owned by a, a young lady at the time, Mitzi Shore, right, right. who got it in a divorce from her husband, right. Sammy Shore. And it used to be Ciro's nightclub. Right. Well, if you ever look at movies from the 50s, they'll pull up in front of Ciro's, and that was sort of the New York style <clears throat> nightclub. Supper club? Yeah, it was supper. like a supper club, yeah, and, the, yeah. and you'd see like uh, orchestras there, and I think that's what, even where Lucy did her uh, rehearsals, right? I, I, I saw I, that in well, the Well, I know like Tony Bennett and all those kind of people played it. It was a legit room. So she- It was it, like the Copa almost. It was like the Copa yeah. West. Yeah. And then she got the room in a divorce. Right. And in the divorce, Sammy said, Sammy had built this club so that him and his friends, he was the opening act for Elvis Presley. Right, right. And he built it so that his friends could come and do comedy. Right, right. And then in the divorce, he said his friends should not show up. Right, right. And then she ended up recruiting like young people who just wanted stage time for right, free. Right, that's, right. Yeah, that was it. And 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 then um, uh, the improv opened up out here, mm -hmm. and w w uh, so what happened? Like the, people said that they wanted because the place was packed around the corner. People decided that they needed to get paid because she was making so much money. Was it? Well, what it was was, <clears throat> you know, it's one of those things where they opened. Oh, let me shut off my phone. Look how I'm busy sorry. Jay is. <laughs> <laughs> Jay. Who's calling? Take it. Philip. Who's, take it, take it. Philip. Oh, Philip. I'm just shooting. I'm, I'm filming a podcast. I'll call you. Call you back in a few minutes. Bye bye. Call you back a little bit. Bye it bye. was Philip. You were reading his phone. I was yeah. reading his watch. Oh, <laughs> his watch. Okay. I, I, Philip. This is my daughter. She. <laughs> I know. I know. Put She's, that on. Uh, I'm a detective. I'll put that on. Philip yeah, called okay, you. <laughs> um, you know, it was interesting. She had the comedy store where we all worked. Uh, Mitzi had a habit of sort of. Well, I think she did it to be helpful, but she would, it got to the point where she would tell people how to do their act. Oh yeah, I know. Like Jack Grayman was a very funny comedian. Mm -hmm. And I remember she uh, said, you're gonna be Jackie Bananas from now on. Do you remember this? No, I don't well, And that. he'd wear a yellow jacket and she wanted to perform that way. And she, she told liked, Jack Grayman to be Jackie Bananas? Yeah, Jackie Bananas. Is that a true story? Yeah, that's true, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, she, and she didn't like people who were quote, fully formed. Like when Seinfeld came in, he was a comedian. He'd been working in the New York New clubs. New York, yeah. And he didn't really work though, because Mitzi wanted people she could mold and that type he of thing. He didn't get spots. He didn't get a lot of spots. No, he didn't get a lot of spots. And anyway, so there was the Comedy Store, and then the Comedy Store of San Diego, then the Comedy Store West and Westwood, and then the main room opened up. And it got to the point where people were buying tickets for Oh, this is, you know, almost 50 years ago, $25, right? $50 or whatever it was a ticket. And she was making a couple hundred grand a week. Really? And the, and the comic said, <clears throat> hey, can we get cab fare or something? And Mitzi was so insulted because she looked at the club as a college, a place where you learn to be a comedian. Well, so many people at that time, you know, Freddie Prince got seen there by The Tonight Show and ended up getting his sitcom, right? Right, right, and right. And Jimmy Walker. Well, actually, Freddie got seen on The uh, on the Tonight Show. He was on with, with Carson. Right, but didn't he get The Tonight Show from being seen? Because I used to see Johnny always say, we saw this young kid at the, uh, right, at the or, comedy store. Right, I'm not sure it was comedy store or whether it was New York. It might have been New York. But that, that's, again, those show business stories kind of thing. But the deal was, Mitzi was very insulted by the fact that people wanted cab fare or at least to get to the club, you know? Right. And I don't think she did it for selfish reasons. I think she just was hurt by this, you know? I mean, this is the standard thing is what usually happens in any, in life, you know? You grow up to go into the father's business and then you become, you wanna be as good as a father or you're better than the father, you know? And then the, the, the an, an infighting starts. So I, I don't, I, I like Mitzi. I didn't think Mitzi was bad. It was just the idea was like, Mitzi, you know, we, we come across town, we're coming in, the club is sold out. You've got names of people on the board. You can't throw 25 bucks a comic just to do a set. No, nobody should get anything. So this turned into a huge fight. And 
the comics went on strike and it got pretty ugly, you know, people taking sides. And Mitzi had a lot of comics that were dependent on her. They lived in her house for free or the apartment that she had for free. And they only worked the club. And to this day, a lot of them still only work the club. Well, that was a thing that I noticed about you. When I came, there was, there were teams, you know, there were the improv, the people right. that worked the improv, right. and there were people that worked the comedy store, and right. they didn't work both. You're probably the only person that I know personally that was allowed to, you'd pull up in your motorcycle, you'd do your set, you'd get on your bike, go do the improv. There was no- Yeah, I mean, I went to the work and then I went home. I wasn't hanging out. I wasn't. But the fact that she would book you and Bud would book you, yeah. you didn't have, they were just thrilled to have you on. Well, I was lucky to be able to have a foot in both camps. And I tried not to play one against the other. But, and of course, once Bud found out that Mitzi wasn't paying, well, then he decided to pay everybody. Right. You know, it'd be magnanimous, you know, all that kind of stuff. So, all right. So now you have one club paying and one not. So, why work the club that's not paying? So then it got ugly. I mean, I didn't go back for 30 years. Oh, you didn't, you were out of the comedy store for 30 years? Well, I left because the comedy store just got crazy with the cocaine and the drugs. Oh, yeah. yeah. And I remember I was in the back one day and, and Sam came in, Kennison, and he had a gun and people doing coke on the table. And I said, you know, I'm a comedian. I, I don't want to get, when this place gets busted, I don't want to get dragged downtown. And you'd already been in that kind of world, right? Weren't you working like the... Uh, well, yeah, the, mob the, club. The yeah, mob. But, what, but I always... I, I just didn't want to be rounded up. As, I mean, to me, it, it it ruined the comedy store. It became a place for, you know, just sleazy women and creepy guys. And Did you work both clubs? <clears throat> uh, not really. They didn't like me at the, at the improv. Mitzi kind of embraced me. Uh, well, you worked the Ice House, too. I worked the Ice House, but the, the teams seem to be the improv and the comedy store. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, I, I just stopped going to the comedy store because it I didn't, didn't want to be there the day. I, I Sooner or later, when people are openly doing cocaine, cops are going to show up. And I'm not a cocaine guy. I don't drink. I, I'm, yeah, I just want to be a comedian. You don't even eat vegetables. I, I don't even eat vegetables. That's correct. <laughs> it is true. 1962 you don't. is my last vegetable. <laughs> that is true. He doesn't eat. You've been eating like burgers and I've pizza. Never, I haven't had a vegetable. And, and yeah, no, that, I is that true? Is that an exaggeration? No, that's that, 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 actually that is, true. that is true. Really? And so is that, have you written a diet book? <laughs> uh, well, I should write a you diet should, book. You should. Fried food groups, burgers, hot dogs, hamburgers, <laughs> pizza, pasta. Can I tell you, know. you eat the same foods as my five-year-old? Well, there you go. You're exactly the same as my five-year-old. There you go. Yeah. Well, there you go. And he's going to grow up to be a strong, healthy child. Yeah. <laughs> but here's what I always thought. And I wanted, and this is why I wanted you on the podcast. I like Not, how we get off on a tangent. You know, <laughs> well, tangents are my, are my life. Yeah, but yeah. 